Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 15th of January. Foreign ministers of India and Nepal hold talks in New Delhi to boost ties. Pakistan's Karachi becomes most affected city by coronavirus. Indian classical dancers mesmerize audience at ancient temple festival. And now for all the details. Nepal's Foreign Minister Pradeep Kumar Gyavali on Friday met his Indian counterpart S. Jay Shankar in New Delhi on Friday for talks even as the political crisis back in the Himalayan nation deepens. The sixth India-Nepal Joint Commission meeting came months after ties between the traditional allies were strained after a border dispute. Nepal's Foreign Minister Pradeep Kumar Gyavli met his Indian counterpart S.J. Shankar in New Delhi on Friday for talks, even as the political crisis back in the Himalayan nation deepened. The leaders co-chaired the 6th India-Nepal Joint Commission meeting where the leaders reviewed the entire gamut of bilateral partnership, including trade, transit, COVID-19 cooperation, infrastructure, connectivity, investment, tourism and culture. Gayavli's three-day official visit comes in over a year, which saw bilateral ties hitting a rock bottom following a bitter boundary dispute between the two countries last year. Nepal is currently undergoing a political crisis after Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli dissolved the parliament and called for fresh elections on December 20, over rift in his ruling Nepal Communist Party. The move has plunged the impoverished nation of 30 million people into uncertainty. India on Friday recorded 15,590 cases of COVID-19 with at least 191 associated deaths. The country has been recording a decline in its daily case count from last few weeks. This comes at a time when India is all set to begin its nationwide vaccination program against the deadly virus on Saturday. India on Friday recorded 15,590 new coronavirus cases with at least 191 deaths due to the infection, Health Ministry data showed. The country has been recording a major decline in its daily case count from last few weeks. National capital New Delhi is among the regions which have reported steady decline in the active infection cases and less loss of lives. कल दिल्ली में 340, 340 पॉजिटिव केस आए, जो पॉजिटिविटी है पहली बारी अब तक के उसमें 0.5 परसेंट से भी नीचे चली गई है, 0.48 परसेंट थी, और जो कल डेथ हुई, वो भी चार डेथ थी, वो भी पिछले नौ महीने में सबसे कम है। Meanwhile, ahead of the launch of nationwide vaccination drive, COVID-19 vaccine doses on Thursday reached remote regions of India. From the Himalayan desert of Ladakh territory in the north to the far-off tribal state of Nagaland in the northeast, India is taking its vaccination drive to every nook and corner of its borders. Today, we have 11,500 doses, which is for both the two districts. We have health care workers, which is for the state health care workers, central government health care workers and armed forces health care workers. The mass immunization drive in India will begin on Saturday with healthcare workers and frontline workers being the first ones to get vaccinated. It has been called the largest vaccination drive in the world by the Indian government. In news from Pakistan, the National Command and Operations Center said on Friday that the highest positivity rate of COVID-19 cases in Pakistan has been recorded in its Karachi city. 
Karachi is the most affected city in Pakistan with a positivity rate of 15.97%, followed by Peshawar at 13.62% and Mirpur at 11.49%. Reports said the surge in coronavirus cases in Karachi is due to cold weather with moderate humidity, which are ideal weather conditions for the virus spread, according to health experts. As of Friday, Pakistan reported a total of over 514,300 COVID-19 cases with more than 10,860 deaths so far. Meanwhile, Pakistan's Education Minister Shafaqat Mahmood on Friday announced schools across the country will reopen from classes 9th to 12th from January 18, while universities will reopen from 1st of February as planned previously. All educational institutions were closed across Pakistan in November amid a second wave of infections. Moving on. The horrific incident of brutal killings of 11 Shia coal miners in Pakistan has shaken the conscience of people and observers around its illegally occupied territories. People from the minority blamed Islamabad has been deliberately altering demography in the region to systematically eliminate them. People belonging to the Shia Muslim community recently held demonstrations in the illegally occupied region of Pakistan administered Kashmir to condemn the Pakistan establishment which they blamed has either been complicit or culpable in the systematic killings of the people from the minority. Expressing anger over the killings of 11 Shia Hazara coal miners in Balochistan by Islamic State militants earlier this month, the demonstrators questioned the will of government to bring the culprits to justice and demanded security guarantees. Meanwhile, Shias in illegally occupied region of Gilgit, Baltistan blamed Islamabad has been systematically altering their demography in the region. In 1948, Shias constituted more than 80% population of Gilgit, Baltistan. They are now around 39%. Koita ke andar aaj nahi, balki 2013 se ab tak musalsal wahan ke jo hazara bar adri hai, jo Shia community se taluk rakhte hain, unki nasal kushi ho rahi hai. In order to tighten its grip on Gilgit, Baltistan, Islamabad has arbitrarily decided to give it a provisional status of a province. Observers say this might be the beginning of the end of Gilgit Baltistan and its people. In news from Bangladesh, a massive fire gutted hundreds of cramped and flimsy makeshift shelters at a refugee camp in southeastern Bangladesh on Thursday and left thousands of Rohingyas homeless. No loss of life was, however, reported in the incident. Rohingyas, who escaped a brutal crackdown in Myanmar in 2017, live in refugee camps in and around Cox's Bazar district of Bangladesh. A massive fire broke out at a Rohingya refugee camp in Bangladesh's Cox's Bazar on Thursday, leaving hundreds of people homeless. At least 500 makeshift dwellings were gutted in the fire at the refugee camp in Cox's Bazar. However, no casualties were reported in the incident, local media said. The cause of the fire was yet to be determined till the last reports came in. In May last year, a similar fire reduced over 400 shelter homes to ashes in Cox's Bazar. With an increasing population and new shelter homes being built over time, officials say it has become increasingly difficult for firefighters to navigate slum areas. This comes as densely populated Bangladesh moved two groups of Rohingya refugees to a low-lying island in the Bay of Bengal recently, citing overcrowding in Cox's Bazar. More than a million Rohingya live in southern Bangladesh, the vast majority having fled Myanmar in 2017 from a military-led crackdown that UN investigators said was executed with genocidal intent. Charges Myanmar denies. Moving on to news from Nepal. Nepal on Thursday hosted an annual bullfighting festival dating back to the 19th century, locally called Goru Judhai. Hundreds of people gathered in Nuakot district of the Himalaya nation to witness the fun-filled bullfight. Have a look. The atmosphere was filled with festive fervor and dust hovered over the field as the age-old bullfighting festival 
locally called Goru Judhai, commenced in Nepal's Navakut district on Thursday. A total of 23 plow or bulls competed to secure the top position in competition, thus proving their strength as well as cash price. Bull owners throughout the year feed their bull with various cereals, rice flour, oils and vitamins to increase stamina and tame their pet, making it eligible for fight. The annual festival of taming bulls has a history that dates back to 19th century in Nepal. It was first introduced by the then prince of Bahjan, Jay Prithvi Bahadur Singh, for entertainment purpose during his visit to maternal uncle's house. Since then, the locals have continued the bullfighting tradition. Classical dancers in India's eastern Bhubaneshwar city mesmerized audience with their performances at an Odissi dance festival that began on Thursday. Indian classical dance form of Odissi is believed to have been originated in temples and is predominantly performed by women for expressing religious stories and spirituality. Classical dancers in India's eastern Bhuvneshwar city mesmerize audience with their performances at Mukteshwar Odissi Dance Festival on Thursday against the breathtaking backdrop of the 10th century temple of the same name. The vibrant evening began as dancers prayed to Hindu god Shiva and continued with the depiction of popular scenes from Hindu mythology. It was very good. मुक्तेश्वर में परफॉर्म करके, it was a very, it was altogether a very different feeling because पीछे टेंपल है, सामने आप डांस कर रहे हो, और इतने सारे ऑडियंस आए हैं देखने के लिए, which was not expected कि कोविड के टाइम में भी इतने जन आएंगे। हमने कल्चर के लिए भी काफी इंपोर्टेंट है, लोग भूल रहे हैं अटेंड नहीं कर रहे हैं, कितने सारे लोग आज आए हुए हैं। बहुत सारे लोग आए हैं, बहुत सारे लोग सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं, ताली जा रहे हैं। और डांस भी अल्टीमेट था, पहले वाला डांस तो सबरी वाला था रामचंद्र के लिए, वो सबरी या रामचंद्र को बेर खिलाती है, वो काफी अच्छा लगा, मतलब देख के एक्सप्रेशन देख के मतलब रूह खरा हो गया, इस तरफ से लग रहा था। और उसके बाद सब सबसे अच्छा चीज़ ये कोरोना का सारे रेस्ट्रिक्शन फॉलो कर दिया जा रहा है लोग डिस्टेंस में टन कर रहे हैं। इंडियन क्लासिकल डांस फॉर्म ऑफ ओडिसी इस बिलीव टू हैव बीन ओरिजिनेटेड इन टेंपल्स एंड इस प्रीडोमिनेंटली परफॉर्म बाय वुमेन फॉर एक्सप्रेसिंग रिलिजियस स्टोरीज एंड स्पिरि� it uses symbolic costumes, body movement, expressions and gestures in sign language. Authorities in India's Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir have deployed State Disaster Response Force to prevent accidents at the scenic Dal Lake that has partially frozen. Often referred to as Srinagar's jewel, Dal Lake is visited by millions of tourists every year. Authorities in India's Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir on Thursday deployed State Disaster Response Force or SDRF personnel to prevent accidents at the scenic Dal Lake that has partially frozen. The pristine lake in Srinagar, the summer capital of Jammu and Kashmir, froze after mercury dipped to minus 9 degrees Celsius. Temperatures dipped to sub-zero levels during the peak winter season and a thick blanket of snow covers the valley and even water inside taps freezes. SDRF officials said the team is equipped with all the necessary equipment. They make rounds to prevent any accidents or rescue the boats stuck in the lake. काम ये है कि किसी किस्म का कोई बचा जो है कोई शख्स जो है या कोई शिकारे वाला अगर खुदा ना खासता डूबता है या उसे किसी कोई हादसा पेश आता है तो हमारी टीम जो है वो इमीडिएटली उसकी हेल्प करने के लिए तैयार है। वो तमाम एक एक मिनट जो भी हमें इसमें दरकार हैं वो हमने इस वक्त अपनी टीम को दिए हुए हैं वो इस वक्त हमारी मौजूदगी जो है ग्राउंड पर 24 घंटे जो है हम यहाँ पर तैनात हैं दो चार दिन से ये झील जमा हुआ है मैं आज आज जाता हूँ आज माइनस आठ है ये पूरा सीज है सब डाल पूरा सीज है सर एच डी आर एफ टीम बहुत अच्छे काम कर रहे हैं ये बहुत फायदा है हमारे लिए एच डी आर एफ यहाँ पर हैं उन कोई शिकारा फंसता है बीच में रास्ता यही निकालते हैं चलने के लिए यही निकालते हैं ये रास्ता थोड़ा सा यहाँ पर रास्ता दिखा रहे हैं ये एच डी आर एफ का टीम निकाल रहे हैं सर ऑफन रेफर टू एस श्रीनगर जूल Dal Lake is visited by millions of tourists every year. 
bringing in huge revenues for owners of shikaras, traditional Kashmiri gondola shaped houseboats, and the hotel industry. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.